You know what it means if uh, we got the old uh, mobile bag out. Yes, it's called mobile bag for a reason. We're going mobile. So open up your travel bags. Uh, it looks like we should clean out our travel bags. I mean, I had one of them the whole time. What in the redneckery was I doing there? Don't worry about the rest of that. We may need it. May, may be a little goody in there we need. What I know we need is some uh, sockets or ratchet and extension combo nations. That's right. We're doing a mobile spark plug replacement job or something like that. What size is that? 11? 7 sixteenths? 10. We definitely want to take a 10 millimeter. In fact, we probably want to take a couple options for 10 mil. And... We're going to take a couple options for ratchet. That way, maybe we ain't got to do all this by hand. So let me give you a little backstory here. Well, it's not really a story, just kind of what's been going on. My mother has a trailblazer. I, I do not even know the year of it, if I'm being honest. Not too long ago, it was slinging water just plumb everywhere. And I went over there, and after doing some looking, I could tell that the water pump was leaking. So due to my busy schedule, trying to get ready for us to go on vacation, uh, I was having a hard time getting to it. So uh, I told her just bring it over to me and I would take it to Uncle Rick, master mechanic. Uncle Rick really is a damn good mechanic. So I took it to him. He knocked it out real quick. Uh, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. And we we're ready to go. Or were we? Well, we kind of were, but we could also tell some other stuff wasn't doing so good. And what I mean by that is when I was taking it to Rick's, on the way there, it kind of did a little, like, I think I was at the stoplight or something, and it kind of, you tell us running, running with a mess for a second, or 30 seconds. Might as well just grab the whole damn toolbox. I'm going to go, let me get both my toolbox, put them in the back of the man van. Put them mobile repair services. Not for hire. So Uncle Rick ended up changing out the water pump. Uh, he took it for a little drive, and then he said at the end, he felt it kind of run a little funky. And then it quit running a little funky. Uh, he put a scanner on it and it was showing that previously it had a misfire. I believe he said on number six. Now, if I've got to get as far in there to check the spark plug in number six, I'm going to go ahead and just put spark plugs in the whole thing because why not? Uh, but we don't know for sure if spark plugs the problem. It could be uh, uh, the coil, I guess, because I don't even think those things have a plug wire. It's all the coil that bolts on. So... We're either going to have a bad plug or a bad a coil going bad, more than likely. Now, I don't work on newer cars unless I absolutely have to. Uh, so, I know we need all kinds of setups and assemblies for getting our plugs out. Uh, we'll probably grab a couple ratchet and things, as in the ratchet and metric wrenches. And I'm going to grab just this 10 millimeter because these things are more than handy. And I'm just assuming that every bolt on that thing is going to be a 10 mil. Now the other thing I know with newer vehicles is if you got to unplug anything with them little connectors and stuff, uh, you definitely want something you can poke and prod with uh, when working on a newer vehicle. And a pair of locking pliers because if we can't get it with this, then by golly, we're going to throw in the towel. We ain't real mechanics. We'll take a rag. We'll take some brake clean. Of course, we'll take our TKO hand cleaning wipes. Uh, available at the sweetpatina.com that way when we get our uh, hands dirty over there we can I could use one right now just picking up crap around here guys they're a good hand cleaning wipe if you want some sweetpatina.com just use the old promo code on the screen I'm sure I'm forgetting something but that's what we're gonna go with now I ain't got plugs yet so we're gonna have to choose our vehicle of choice outside and head to the parts house first and we may be working in the rain today. Hi-ho, hi-ho. To go work in the rain we go. I hate feeling wet. I hate that shit. Hi-ho, hi-ho, hi-ho. My, oh my, what is in that box up there? Well, it's most certainly not a hitch for the van. Or is it? <laughs> it is. It is. I took the old Yeehaw on a voyage. She's been running around town mostly, so uh, giddy up there. Yeehaw, time to saddle up and ride. Quick little pit stop here at the post office. Drop off the rest of our merchandise orders. Thank you guys for the support. Oh yeah. <laughs> the Yeehaw is such a good little truck. Love this little rig. And 
we done skedaddled over here to the parts house. Need to get some spark plug in action. Oh yeah. Uh, go and put some of them good iridium plugs I've been promoting, guys. Those will probably be the last ones I have to put in this thing uh, for my mom. If you want to save $5 off a purchase of at least $25 of regularly priced merchandise, big words, they get me sometimes, you know. Uh, just click the link in the description of this video. If I forget to put it down there, comment, and I'll try to get it. It's real easy, guys. You click the link. It generates a one-time use coupon. You spend 25 bucks here, it's gonna save you five bucks. That's gonna work until July 5th. Today's June 27th, so it'll post uh, June 29th-ish. There's a few days left for y'all to use that thing if you want, if you like saving money. I won't hold a gun to your head, okay? If you like spending money, just go spend it. Don't save it. Right now, we're rolling deep. Mini Truck Mafia got the little Toyota pickup in front of us. Little Tacoma action. She's lucky she's turning at the McDonald's because I was about to blow her doors clean off. Oh, no one went down this thing. Even when it looks like I'm hauling butt, guys, I'm still accelerating slower than a 96-year-old grandma on her 06 Ultima. Put in Tang's mobile repair service has arrived. Should have gave the Trailblazer a love tap. Let it know I was here. Parking brake test. We're on a hill. It's thinking about working. Oh yeah, that's solid. All right, we got the keys to our uh, patient here. Give her a little hood pop. Oh, uh, yeah, someone's popped the handle. <laughs> She'll still pop. Yep, that's a motor. Looks like an engine to me. Looks like something I don't enjoy working on to me is what it looks like. Did I bring a screwdriver? No, I brought sockets though. Oh, you dang right I brought a screwdriver. Mama didn't raise no pump, so let's work on my mom's car. I think we're gonna have to take this off. I see a bolt there. I'm assuming this whole thing kinda comes up off there. Looks like we got a clamp back here too, so we probably gotta remove both of them. How about we just wing it and ding it? It's got me this far in life. Shoo, she's looking good. Hope she's ready for a fuel injected two, three turbo swap coming soon. Plus or minus, give or take a year or two. <laughs> I didn't know what y'all's definition or, of soon was, but a year or two, you know. She's uh, scheduled in the books. We look like the rain may be moving out, so I think we're gonna get lucky. I did bring a screwdriver. I didn't know I put that in there. I really just pulled out them tools and now it's gonna start raining. That's how you're gonna do me, Mother Nature, huh? Oh, right in the eyeball? You shitting me? Oh. Them are fighting actions right there. How's my glasses look? <laughs> Shouldn't have even talked about the rain. Should have kept my yap shut. Oh. First, we're gonna pop off the factory cold air intake. Good for about 7,000 horsepower. Next up, we're going for clamp number two here. We'll loosen it. Uh, like I said, I don't know if it's just this one bolt. If there's another bolt, uh, let's pull it. Nope. Feels like there's something at the back. Yep. There we go. Now the box wants to come out and play. I notice right there we got a, some type of tube of some sort that's going to go right back on there. So when we put this back on, we definitely want to make sure that goes back on. This is the cold air intake vortex tube. It gives 4,200 extra ponies underneath this hood. And getting that old turbine vortex box out the way reveals our uh, uh, coils that are here to play. Now you remove these 10 millimeters, whoop, those will come up out of there. And back one don't look like it'll be too bad. It's way back there in Nantucket. Uh, and I think number six was the problem, Uncle Rick had said. I forgot to tell you guys. Uh, so this thing, she's actually, it's parked. Uh, she can't drive it right now. It's hard to see, but the Torella's parked at her neighbor's house. She had moved it where I could park right there. So she had drove all the way up to the city, was running around everything. She made it back down a mile or so from here. And she just said it got where it had no power. It wasn't wanting to drive. I don't know that these things have limp mode, but I'm assuming with a strong 
educated guess that they do have a limp mode and i'm just assuming that number six whatever was going out completely shut down it was totally trying to run on five and it went into limp mode and she barely made it here that's all a guess uh so we could put all this together or we could try to fix this and it may not even fix our problem i don't know what i do know is number one here i noticed the bolt was covered by this so we gotta figure out how to get this out the way Well, maybe someone's been in here before because that clip is broke and that clip is broke. And it looks like we can just kind of pull that up out the way. Should be able to zip out the first four pretty quick. Pop that sucker up out of there. Make sure that bolt won't fall out and it's got some type of retainer on it. That's good. So we'll just lay it over to the side luckily for us this sucker is cool uh if you were doing this hot one it wouldn't be as fun oh that one didn't come off there because there ain't nothing fun about burning your hands and fingers but you definitely want to pay attention if you were just hanging these over if they were hot because uh you got your exhaust manifold on this side and little rubber boots and stuff probably wouldn't like that big old cast manifold if it was hot now these back there we're gonna have to get a little more creative but they don't look bad at all by creative i meant we just gotta take our extension off uh-oh <laughs> don't tell me i just did that got us in bad shape here well that thing was boogieing along and i felt it uh kind of shove up into there which means it's stuck which ain't no good we're in a bad spot because how the hell am i supposed to switch that don't worry she pulled off there maybe something a little more fit for smaller spaces dummy hey now there's using your noggin number five damn the su suspect here in this crime box truck mafia baby boot looks good uh i guess if your boot was messed up that could cause you some problems too of course i ain't got a damn clue what i'm looking at on this coil as far as it you know but how about we get some spark plugs out next i'll be curious to see what uh, number six looks like <clears throat> i hate them stupid suck em lids i'm a man i need to be able to chug this stuff not be nurtured it by a teat here really look i'm just assuming those are five eights they sure are holy cow that sucker is in there there she goes yeah that had all of it we go for a new setup longer extension where we ain't got two stuck together then we'll reduce the big mama uh, right here on it maybe it'll back it out Huh. apparently my socket does not have the rubber boot in there to help you pull it out she's got the champion iridium so you can tell they've been in there for a good minute uh yeah i don't think we're gonna hurt at any by slapping some new units in this thing she's a good rig uh of course she's got the bow tie she's got a little patina too see that two three and four next up five and six which is head in the back a little more oh yeah that may be just right what if we do just that to get her broke free but then not spin it up into the firewall like an idiot Well, what in the Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch we got going on there? Number five. For 
number six. I think this is a little shorter than the one, but a little longer than the other. Oh yeah, that's the magic combo right there, baby. Yeah. We'll just do one manual labor to remind me of where I came from. <clears throat> Come on, little stinker. There she is. So number one and number six almost look like it had like anti-seize on it. You see that? Then look at the threads on the other ones. Oh, that right there is a champion. That one's an AC Delco. Yep, AC, AC, and AC Delco. I can still see where that sucker was arcing across there. She's built up a little bit on that side. I doubt it's enough to make it run funky. Because number five's got about the same amount of crap on it, and it was running just fine. Allegedly, according to the scanner, guys. Once again, though, after looking at them, obviously we ain't gonna hurt it one bit by slapping some new plugs in it. And that's what we got right here. Six fresh, shiny, brand new plugs. Now, this did not come with a little protective sleeve on that. And uh, as y'all may have learned from my last video on the main channel with the wagon, uh, you want to always make sure you got the right gap. So we want to check that. And neither one of them are closed up, so we definitely want to at least put eyeballs on it at a minimum. And I ain't going to lie, we could slap those in there and be just fine. I do believe that. I do believe the internet will also light you on fire if you don't check them. It'll light me on fire because I thought I brought my spark plug gapper checker thingy. And I did not. I guess I get to prove my theory that slapping these in will be just fine. Because that's what we're going to have to do. <sighs> well, here I thought we were going to get rained on. And now it feels awesome out here. I'm just going to eagle eye all these. Uh, they're, they're probably pre-gapped, guys. So you really just want to make sure that the tip ain't got bent down. If, if one's bent, you'll be able to tell. These things are gapped exactly like the old ones were. And we knew it was running on this half-ass anyhow, so... Good enough for me. Our next little tricky bit here is getting this down in there and getting it started since our gap or uh, uh, socket ain't wanting to hold the plug. You'll notice we had some electrical tape in our bag there. What happens if we just take that electrical tape and we shove it up in there on one side, tape it to the other side where it should come back out, wheel that, hold it, just enough. Let's put another piece on this side. I bet it'd be even better. A little, little custom tape job here in Pot County. That holds it real good. He is bumping. Number one went right down in just beautifully. Go torque on it. Pops off there. That's a good little trick right there. Just learned it. Now, back in my Air Force days, on the B-52 engine, what, what was it we'd have to replace? The igniter? Uh, yeah, working on some, some ignition systems on there as well. There's one on the outside, kind of running above the fuel control. I don't really remember, guys, because it's been a while. Uh, but there was a clamp on that thing called the bitch clamp, and it's called a bitch clamp for a reason. If it's your first time doing it, you're working an eight or nine hour shift, you may be on it all shift into, into the next day. And if you're lucky and you have someone who's pretty good at it show you how to do it, and you're pretty creative, like using tape to shove it in your wrench and then shoving the uh, nut into that, that way it don't fall out, uh, you can get pretty quick at it. We used to kind of see who could do it faster. I remember old Cuddy was pretty good at it, and Cuddy still watches my videos, me and him talk from time to time. He had them little hands that helped him out and get wiggled up in there. And then this other guy who's actually pretty good at it, uh, his last name was Wiener. And I'm not even making that up, trying to be funny. He was, uh, his last name was Wiener. I'm going to run it down, but I'm not going to use that to torque it. I'm going to torque it by hand with a ratchet. Right there. Torque. And you will notice I want to uh, start all of these by hand as well. Uh, I just don't got the cojones on me to start it with the power tool. Snug it up. All right. That's all six of them. And our coils here. Uh, just make sure there ain't nothing obviously junky in there. 
and that sucker should pop right back down on so you do just push them down on there and as long as that sucker tightens down you're good sounds like witchcraft to me It's just me, but it don't even feel like those things click on there. They just go down there and touch it or what? Beat on it. That'll help. I don't know if I want to replace number six or if I just want to try it. Obviously, a factory Delphi, Delphi, however you say it, coil is going to be better than the one I picked up from a parts house. Now, looky there. Uh, Delphi, Delphi, that one don't say it, that one don't say it, this one don't say it, number five does. Obviously the factory stuff is usually better, uh, but it looks like this one's been swapped out before, so that don't make me feel as bad about just throwing a part at it and going ahead and swapping it out. The scanner said number six, the plugs look to me like they should be firing, not causing it definitely to kick into limp mode, so we're going to still point the finger at this thing. So here's our replacement one, which looks pretty well just like this one here. That one's a little more sun-kissed than this one is, but other than that, it looks the same. Obviously, it ain't had no sun. It's had, it's more baked. It's been baking in that engine bay. So we'll keep this one. We'll take it back and just say it really looked like crap when we opened it up. Uh, what the hell is this thing y'all sold me? It's plum covered in dirt. <laughs> Pushed on there, but did it click on? Yeah, I guess it did. Yeah, that's not bad at all guys it was not a bad job uh, just looking it does look like that oil leak you can see right here it looks like it's coming from right there so i'm wondering if that thing's been off there anyhow is this throttle body worth cleaning while we're here i mean it does look a little dirty i don't know nothing about cleaning throttle bodies i did a quick little internet research and uh it seems like there's some conflicting answers There's some conflicting answers of whether you can use a uh, brake clean to do this because that's what I have is brake clean. Some people say yes, some people say no, some people say non-chlorinated. Some people say I use regular old brake cleaner and always have and ain't ever had a problem. Some people say there's a special coating you'll take off there and other people just don't simply give a damn. Well, I'm feeling like one of those kind of people. If it messes up, I'll be the one fixing it again, so don't worry. And I did see one guy who said after you get her clean, because it ain't used to running clean, you need to pull the fuses for the PCM, let it reset. That way, when you fire it back up, it learns how to run itself again with a clean throttle body. I don't know. We'll probably do that just because. But speaking of which, before I pull the other two bolts out, why don't we get this sucker unplugged? You push in on that, I think, and then pry back on this. I dropped it and then I dropped my light, but I got it. Then, I think you can just push that down. Oh, crap. That, that was it, but that hurt. I like how I brought that. I brought that like I planned to do this. I promise you I did not. That was just what I had there on the table. I'm pretty sure these suckers just O-ring seal on here. So we should be able to pull this right off and then clean it, put it right back on. Now, oh, I did not realize that tube hooked to that. I thought that side would... This thing was part of the manifold. It is not. Looks like you just push on that right there and it'll let that hose off, vacuum hose or whatever it is. One day when the Yeehaw grows up, it wants to be a trash truck actually. So we're gonna slide that with our thumb. Oh, yep, pops right off there. Now, as far as resetting the PCM like that gentleman talked about, they said like number 10 and Number 28, number 28 PCM. So we'll pull it. Number 10 PCM B, 20 amper. Where the hell is it? There's a 20 amper. That's it right there. We'll give that, say, 10, 20 minutes. It's 1130 on the dot, so that's easy to remember. So since I ain't ever even cleaned a throttle body before, I'm going to uh, just go easy on it, and we'll spray this on here and then do our... We'll rely on doing some scrubbing. Oh yeah, that's gonna shine her up. 
This sucker will be ready to set a land speed record out at the salt flats when I get through with it. Holy cow, it is thick right there. You get that brake clean actually on it and it just eats it down. Ended up uh, blasting it a little more than I was planning to. Kind of down there in the corners, nooks and crannies. The brake clean would just blast it right off there. And so this sucker right here is officially Pot County rebuilt. Whole lot cleaner. Kind of polished on that little nipple where our vacuum line has the seal to. And we'll probably wipe our O-ring over here. Uh, hopefully it'll still seal up. Not getting too buck nasty on it, just a quick little wipe. You just want to let it know you're thinking about it, that you care about it. And I must have a cut on my left hand because that brake clean found it. Just like our spark plugs, guys, I'm going to run it down with that, but then do them by hand. You're going into a plastic intake manifold and your O-ring sealing, so don't be getting too crazy on them. You definitely don't want to crack your intake. Ah. Boy, I thought it was noisy at my house. Nothing but damn car after car. I say that and come over here and then there's no cars. That pops right back on. Get a plug back. And our little locking clip for the plug. If it don't run or it's still in bad shape, I don't know what we need to do other than hook a scanner up to it and see if we're getting any other information. So long story short, we might as well just slap the tornado box on. That way if she does fire up and she's sending tornadoes through that intake and she's just whirling and twirling, making all the spin and horsepower as it is basically now a supercharger since it's been cleaned, uh, it'll just be ready to go. It should just shimmy right there into place. Oh! I never popped her little cover back on. How unprofessional of me. There you go. Now we slap this unit there. Tighten our clamp. Hey, I just now noticed that clamp has a notch in it. And then there's a tab there. That way that thing stays indexed. That's handy. Damn new cars and all their great technology. All right. So we had right at 20 minutes with these out. Pop them right back in. I'm gonna hope I did everything right. Because I don't enjoy playing grab ass with trailblazers. <laughs> I'm assuming you're supposed to let it run some before it takes off, so I'm gonna say let's give her five minutes to idle if it runs good. Will it run? 05 Chevy Trailblazer abandoned. Four days. She's got a little squeak to her, but she seems to be running smooth. That day it uh, was messing up when I drove it. Oh, little yappers are outside. When it messed up when I was driving it, I mean, you could feel it. It was like a cylinder went totally dead. That right there's running on all six. There's old Slicky Poo. He said he was headed towards this way. And I said, hey, I'm here now. And he said, you wanna grab some lunch? Well, we gotta finish our mechanicin first. Well, she's running super smooth, guys. That day it started running bad, I popped the hood. It looked like it had a damn shaker with a hog cam from hell, guys. It was just wah, wah, wah. Uh, super smooth now. A little squeak went away. I done cleaned up our mobile shop. So we need to move the Yeehaw and we'll take it for a little test drive. Yeah. Thing, been doing some mud and didn't even realize it. Matt, you're always honest. Did you like the wheels and tires when I first put them on there? The bigger wheels? No. Do you like them now? Did they grow on you at all? Yeah. A little bit? Or is yeah. it still no? A little bit. I think the other ones look better though. Told y'all with Matt, you always get a straight shot, no BS answer. All right, let's take her for a little test driving action. Let's go see if she's about, about it. I can already tell it's running a lot smoother than it ever was. It may not be her problem because she goes in reverse just fine. Or does she? Yeah. She goes into reverse, but it is not like and drive. Not really 
Yeah, yeah. Alright guys, we're gonna try again, but when I pulled it down into low, it wanted to move. It kind of makes me think maybe like shift no uh, solenoid ain't doing its job. So we're gonna just go try to shift this thing through. And if that is the problem, I don't know how to identify which shift solenoid it is. And we ain't got time or the equipment here to mess with it today. Pulls just fine right there. Except it will not shift to second gear. Oh, I put it in third and it shifted. What happens when we go to just drive? Well, we're leaving my mom's with a few extra questions. <laughs> There's people over there in a damn dune buggy. <laughs> Look at them. So before we head back home, I like coming by this place. They have some good signs and stuff here once in a while. I've also been wanting to show y'all the oldest box truck I found in Pike County so far. Had some type of box on the back and they painted a big old rat fink on there. Pretty cool. So I did a little browsing around in there. And this thing, guys, this thing is rad. Look how old that box is. It's got a good patina to it. Y'all know I've been a sucker for that yellow patina here lately. Which is why we just bought this. To fulfill my yellow patina needs. It's a wiper cabinet storage thingy majigger. We got storage up there. Storage down in the bottom. Got all kinds of cool writing on it. The backside everything's like perfect on. So I was talking to the lady in there and I mentioned her box truck and she said they bought that thing for $25 at an auction around here five or six years ago because no one wanted it. 25 buckaroos got that thing. So next we're going to take this out to the new place. For it, we're taking the truck because I need to get the trailer. I stole Matthew from Slick. it'll get you it's a good thing it fell off because i was about to smash you guys reason I say it wasn't bad is because Matt's built like a linebacker and he made it a lot easier because I should have done it by myself it didn't do a damn thing our big big spicy pepper secure uh, but I almost forgot we need to take that out the back whole pepper stayed strapped and it made it it's about ready to go on Matt's Buick all right guys kind of having a little look-see here I think we're gonna try to unbolt this unit there's some bolts up in there it's what? Like <laughs> Matt said the carpet in there is nasty. I wonder, how, I wonder how bad it bounced before they put the rope on. <laughs> we'll just leave a hook. No, oh, that's a rare lure right there. That's the double treble hook, large mouth tadpole. Oh yeah, pepper's free. <laughs> Yuck. All right, we're dropping the pepper off with Slick. Him and Matt, they're gonna shave whatever that is on the bottom. Uh, we got a crack here just from paint, probably cause this is house paint, I don't know. They're gonna do whatever it takes. Like you can see that over there, I don't know. I don't know what they're gonna do. We just need that kind of feathered out. Of course, we got letters because this used to belong to a donut shop. That makes sense. Ever had one of those spicy donuts from uh, Duncan? I'll light you up. 
Uh -oh. I, uh, mistakenly is that really it, a thing? Yeah, I mistakenly thought it was strawberry donut. Uh -oh. It was not. <laughs> <laughs> Long story short, I'm gonna have them repaint this thing. We're going back red. We're going with the green stem on it. And with any luck and any hope, she'll end up with some flames on it. And that's gonna be the base for a sign we're working on in the new shop. All right, boys. I'm gonna strap down the topper and get out of here. Cool. Uh -huh. There's a little hot rod. Ashley has something to look at at the new house. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna have to cut that camper shell in half or not, so I grabbed a Sawzall just in case. You wanna drive? No. You want me drive? Yep. You like that side? Is that your side of the truck? <laughs> Let's see here. No appliances. No whatever that is. No tires, barrels, hazardous. But it don't say nothing about camper shells. So the question is, can we get it in there? Did you see it break? Yeah, it was black. It shattered, didn't it? I know someone's gonna be like, oh, you should have sold it, you could have fixed that. The one glass was already knocked out. The top was plumb warped and cracked and funky from the gigantic pepper. The only thing that thing would have been good for is a flex seal commercial. And one gentleman could have flex sealed it and turned it into a boat or something and learned that is worthless. It ended up right where it needed to be. Oh, you wanna get frisky? Come on back here. Come on back here. I'm right here, buddy. Fly on down. I got these hips moving already. I thought I had some hornet killer in here. Ah, stuck him. He's back for another. Oh, he's still. He's a little dazed and confused, guys. He's rocked. He's flying into everything. He hit the ground three times. He just accidentally flew up my britches. That thing's over there plumb flying into the truck. Watch. He don't even know what hit him. I hit him with old Pot County jab. Come on back, buddy. That right there, that is, that's what we call a problem. Y'all think this is your shop, huh? Is that what you think? Looks like there's five of them. They're pretty distracted. They're building that thing right now. Uh, I don't recommend this to nobody. I think I'm gonna hit him with the Super Mario. I think I'm gonna just jump and smash and hightail it. <laughs> Looks like I got them all but one. Oh, the original one's back. Come on back. Well, that went well. Uh, that crap got all over my uh, doors, which I'm not thrilled about. Do you have guests that like to come over and make a mess at your nice new shop? Like they like to just plumb splatter stuff on your shiny painted door. Well, you may need to get gone to grease or buy the sweet patina. Boy, that sure was a nasty mess before. Thanks, sweet patina. What are we doing now, girl? Getting a snow cone. What flavor did you get? Blue cotton candy and wedding cake. Now, as far as the trailblazer situation goes, uh, I'm playing phone tag still with my transmission buddy. So he calls me, I call him back and forth and we ain't talked to each other yet. I'm hoping he can give me some insight. I'm hoping it's just some, the shift solenoids. Uh, but I ain't convinced because I don't know enough about them yet. I still think I should have been able to shift from first into second and then into the third. It was just kind of funky. But then I'm like, maybe one of them stuck and that somehow prevents it from shifting into second. I don't know because I don't really know how they work. All I do know is if it's shift solenoids, uh, I need to get that done as soon as possible. And I got to get y'all main video. So more than likely, I'll try to get it to Uncle Rick and have him swap them out. And if it is the transmission, then at some point, I don't know. That's a whole can of worms I don't even want to think about opening right now. So I don't really know how this video is going to turn out because I was kind of like these weeds out here. I was just all over the damn place. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't even that funny, but it got me. I hope y'all enjoyed <laughs> I'm on the Instagrammer. 
I'm on the Patreon. I am not that funny. That was not a good one. I don't know why I'm laughing so hard. Uh, good quality merchandise at the puddinsfabricationshop.com. And we will be releasing some new merchandise coming up this Monday. Yep. So the next main channel video drop. I hope you guys are ready. <laughs> I appreciate every one of you guys. I hope I tell you that enough. And I hope y'all know I truly mean it. I will see you guys next time. Do not forget, sitting on your ass won't finish your project. Unless your project is to edit a video tonight before you go to bed for the second channel. Then you better get in there and sit on your ass and get her dead. Hot damn, there's so much BSRE. We had to start a whole channel for all the extras. Be sure to go check out Puddin's Fab Shop if you ain't seen that baby yet. Come on!